So I guess to kind of sum up that tracker screen, um, I don't like this at all. So while I am aware of the recent action DuckDuckGo has taken regarding their search results, I will not be covering that in today's video. I'll only be talking about the Mac browser beta. So DuckDuckGo recently announced they're going to be having a private beta for their browser app, and it's now open to apply to. So while I'm not a fan, they force you to download the app to apply to the beta. It is kind of nice you don't have to give your email address. I'm assuming they just use some unique ID from the app install. But once you are accepted to the beta, you will see a screen like this with an invite code. So according to this, anyone can download the app, but if you don't have an invite code, then the only option is to quit the app. So let's put in our invite code. Let's hope this works, otherwise it'll be a very short video. Wonderful, that worked. Just a quick screen about how to send feedback. Let's get started. Fun little flash animation. Well, it's probably not flash, HTML5. Yes, I'm tired of being tracked. No, I will not be importing anything. It's not says our default browser. So as the title says, this is my first impression of the browser. I've never used it before or tested it. The most I've done is read some blog posts about it, but that's about it. And I gotta say from a design perspective, as a person who appreciates a clean look to an app, this browser looks pretty good so far. So let's go to a website, see what this looks like. So I was going to be typing krebsonsecurity.com. DuckDuckGo autofilled that for me, which means they are sending data in the background to their search engine. I'm never a fan of this feature in browsers because that means they send whatever you type by default in the URL bar. So if you type something by mistake or something inappropriate you didn't mean to type, that means they have that on record. Well, technically DuckDuckGo doesn't because they don't keep logs, but I think you understand my point. So usually I disable this feature. By default, it's enabled in this browser. Um, we'll check out the settings after and see what that looks like. So we had an over there. So we have a little shield they mentioned. If you hover over it, it turns green. Fancy. Zero trackers were blocked, so they didn't detect any trackers on this page. So we have the connection is secure. We have some details about the certificate on this website. Krebsonsecurity.com. What data the public key has regarding encryption. So pretty simplified, which I think is good. Most people don't need all the details that some other browsers have. So I guess simplified is good. Let's go to a site that I'm assuming will have trackers. Oh, there we go. Okay, so who we blocked. If we click on this, had to adjust the screen so you could see what I'm clicking in the screen recording. So if we click on the who we blocked, we get a nice full list of breakdown of everything that was blocked. So we can see that Warner Media was allowed. I'm assuming that's a first party tracker since they say trackers owned by this site. It's a little odd. Honestly, not a fan that they actually allow any trackers whatsoever. Don't think they should. But we can see that 27 trackers were blocked on CNN.com. So a lot of browser add-ons, such as uBlock Origin, different things like that, that do block tracking services, they have lists similar to this that you just normally don't see in this kind of a layout. But I gotta say that as far as a layout goes and easy to understand, this is pretty slick looking. We have a breakdown of all the URLs that are blocked for one specific company along with what they are. So we have the advertising URLs, analytics, and again, you know, index exchange, just all analytics, no advertising. So as far as the interface goes on this, I really like the display. I'm not a fan of this part. Just because it's owned by them doesn't mean I want to allow it. Maybe we'll see something in the settings that lets us block that later. So by default, the fact that it's blocking trackers and advertisers, I do like that. The fact that it did allow one owned by the website, not a fan of that part. But again, we'll see if that's in the settings in a moment. Other than that, I don't really see much going on. There's not many other buttons. Again, it's a very clean interface, which also means pretty straightforward and simple. We have the new tab button. Okay, so on the new tab, we do get a little summary of a breakdown of what was blocked. So CNN.com, 41 tracking attempts blocked. Krebs on security, as we saw, nothing was there. So on here, we have the star icon to add it to our favorites. And we also have the little fire icon to burn history and site data. So let's just give that a try. Single click, no confirmation, fun little animation, I'm a fan of animations. We also have the little fire icon in the top right hand corner. I'm assuming that should do the same thing except for all data in the browser. Let's go ahead and click that, leave no trace. So this reminds me of the screen in Chrome or Firefox when you go to clear your data. You get an option, looks like all data. Usually in Chrome and Firefox you get a time frame also. But in this one it looks like you can set it to current window, tab, or everything. See the details. So again, we only have the one site. We already burned the data for CNN.com. So it's only going to clear it for Krebs. 
It's kind of nice. You can select the domains you might want to keep. Let's go ahead and hit clear. So I'm just going to go to a bunch of other websites quick that I know have trackers built into them so we can see what data looks like a little bit more. So let's do that quick. So as I was loading random websites to test, I did notice that when I went to google.com, the shield up here has a little red dot. So if we go ahead and click on that, looks like this is a notification, Google owner of google.com. We can't block them on sites they own, but we can on other pages. So if we go ahead and click on this tracker network, Google owns this site and the known trackers found on this page, so we didn't block them. So I guess looking at this, I get it why they use this wording, so we didn't block them. On the previous one, they said we can't block them on sites they own. So I'm not a fan of that wording because when you say we can't, technically you can block them. This wording, we didn't block them. That's a little more accurate, but I guess that's just arguing semantics. So looking at the list of trackers that were not blocked because they're owned by this site, the first one we can see here is www.google.com. I understand not blocking that one. If that one's blocked, then we cannot visit the site we decided to go to in our browser. That would really ruin the experience, so I understand allowing that one. As far as the next two go, I don't know if these are required for the functionality of google.com. If they are required, then I understand allowing them. If they are not required, then I disagree with the fact that these were allowed. I don't know enough information at this time to know whether or not that's the case, if it's they are required or not required, so I can't really say anything conclusive on that, but I do think that is an area of concern as far as their tracker blocking goes. So if we check out Amazon.com, again, the little shield, zero trackers were blocked. Let's see why. We only found trackers owned by Amazon, so they didn't block them. So I just wanted to confirm something quick before I made the statement. So here I am in Chromium. I have uBlock Origin installed. It's blocking ads and trackers. If we take a look here, we have fls-na.com.amazon.com. Uh, this was blocked. And if we go take a look at... Duck, duck, go. We have that same domain here, fls-na.amazon.com. I know it says Amazon owns these this site and the known trackers, so we didn't block them. I don't understand why. Maybe there's some legality behind it. Actually, I don't even really know. I would just be speculating if I said why they didn't block it. But we can clearly see here, fls-na is not integral to the functionality of amazon.com. So if they really wanted to, they could block that. They're just not for some reason. Um, I don't like this at all. If you're telling me that you know their trackers and you're just allowing them because it's a first party tracker, which means it's the domain we're visiting owns them, I don't think that makes them okay. So as far as browsing sites go, I don't think there's much more to see. So let's check out the settings. So DuckDuckGo is not our default browser. We have the appearance settings, address bar, show full website address. I do like that setting. So that's something I usually enable in my browser so you can see the full URL. We have show autocomplete suggestions. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I don't like this feature. When that's enabled, that means every keystroke on your keyboard, that data is being sent to the search engine you have configured in the background. I like to make sure that I'm only sending data after I hit enter on my keyboard and not as I type. Let's go to privacy. So the first one we see here, ask to fireproof websites when signing in. So fireproof, again, if you click the little fire icon, it gets rid of all data related to that site or in your browser. So if you fireproof it after signing in, that means that when you click that icon, you'll still be signed in even after clicking it. Otherwise your cookies will be erased and you'll have to log into that site again. Cookie consent pop-ups, let DuckDuckGo manage cookie consent pop-ups. That's a very interesting feature. So I've never actually seen this option before or heard about it. Perhaps other browsers have it, I don't think they do. But if this actually works as it says, then that's pretty handy, I gotta say. So the last option here, global privacy control, GPC. Looks like that in addition to blocking trackers, they can also ask websites to restrict selling or sharing your data with other companies. So I don't really know how I feel about this feature. If you ever heard of the do not track header that other browsers used to support in the past, I think it's all but dead at this point. It was kind of a gimmick and it never really worked as expected. To me, this is kind of sounding a bit similar. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But usually when you ask a company to not sell your data, how's it going, Facebook? Uh, they usually don't care much and they'll sell whatever they can to make a buck. Yeah, that's about all I can say about that one. So something I'm not seeing here in privacy is the option to block first party trackers as we saw on amazon.com earlier that they didn't block because they were owned by them. I was hoping that would be a setting in here and maybe by default it was disabled, but I'm not seeing it. So that's kind of concerning. 
We have autofill. This looks pretty standard boilerplate for what other browsers support. And this setting is just where to save files about version 0 0.23.0. So this is about 100 versions behind Firefox and Chromium. So as you can see, settings are pretty minimal, especially compared to Firefox or Chromium. I do think that is a positive in one aspect for the everyday user who doesn't want to customize their browser much and just wants some tracking protection out of the box. As we can see, we just started using it. We're blocking trackers. We have a good information screen, especially when trying to see what was blocked. I think that could be beneficial to raise awareness for a lot of everyday users. So I do have some concerns based off my first impression of the browser. Uh, the first one being that while it's nice, the settings are very simplified. I also see that as a very big downside for some users, myself included. Other browsers, as I mentioned, Firefox and Chromium have a lot more settings available to you. And here we're just very restricted on what we can change. Even the fact we can't change the default search engine, we're locked in with DuckDuckGo. And while I get it's their browser, other browsers such as Chrome and Firefox allow you to change the search engine. That seems like a very basic feature to me. Again, this is a beta browser, so perhaps that'll be included in future releases. And then my second and probably most major concern is the fact they're not blocking first party trackers. Like we saw with Amazon.com, they're allowing them because they're owned by this site. As we saw in the quick test, uBlock Origin was blocking fls-na.amazon.com and the site was loading perfectly fine. So I was hoping to see a setting in the settings to block first party trackers that is not available as we saw. Um, so maybe that'll be something they allow in the future. But since extensions and add-ons are not supported, I can't even install a third party ad blocker to block these trackers. So as far as using this browser goes, I'm going to continue using it because I do have some questions I want to research and I just kind of want to get a better feel of the overall experience of it. I will give them the benefit of the doubt. This is a beta release, which means that things change. If this was a final release, I'd have a lot more comments to make. But if something's in beta, they're still making changes and it's not a full-fledged release that they're giving out to everyone. So we'll see how that goes and what happens with future updates.